How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host, Jesse Morgan, a.k.a. Slamarella. It has been a fat second since we've done anything on this channel. My apologies. First of all, January is just apparently a really shit month for YouTubers to really upload anything and, and actually have it seen and recognized by the algorithm. So if the big channels are having troubles getting seen, you can imagine what it's like for channels like myself. So, A... Honestly, didn't feel like there's any point of any of doing anything in January if it's not going to get seen anyways. And B, January just didn't seem like a very motivational month for me to put out any content or anything like that. My last big video was the Christmas haul. Happy New Year, by the way, everyone. Looking forward to the rest of 2023. The first achievement of this year was me receiving my yellow belt in... Iron Leaf Mixed Martial Arts. I should be having a video on my Sharp Hand Path channel uh, in the next week or so and maybe talk a little bit about what receiving the yellow belt means to me and, and have a little clip of me actually getting it. So that was cool. And then uh, by the time this goes up, it's probably going to be halfway or a uh, three quarters of the way through February. So thanks for your patience. Let's get into the first video of 2023 and it's going to be as the title suggests a horror movies to watch or avoid episode the first movie is arguably not a horror movie but it deals with supernatural and ghosts and and some you know slightly frightening scenes i suppose if you're younger and i like the series so i just wanted to talk about it in general so excuse me for showing this in a horror movie update but yeah, this is Ghostbusters Afterlife. We don't talk about the one before this. But it was really good in my opinion. Very fun. Paul Rudd and Finn Wolfhard and the other actors in this did a really good job in my opinion. I liked how they refreshed the story in this and kind of brought back some of the classic character lore into it. Brought back Pete Venkman for a little bit. Brought back Ernie Hudson for a little bit and you know did what they did at the end of the movie i'm not gonna spoil it maybe you haven't seen it yet so highly recommend you do so but it, it was it was nice what they did at the end and even kind of teased a continuation of the ghostbusters film series going forward can't wait to see more production shots and stuff of that any more information that comes out on the new one if it's as good as ghostbusters afterlife i'm definitely going to be buying a copy on dvd and watching it in theaters if i can ghostbusters one two and now afterlife are definitely going to be staples if you are a fan of the early films then you will enjoy this one and definitely need to get a copy in your collection i give it a solid 8.5 out of 10 really fun not gory or or like a thriller or anything but if you're a horror fan you probably would enjoy ghostbusters so there we go there's the unofficial first movie in this episode oh geez this one is just bad all right the first official horror movie in this horror movies to watch or avoid update is this gothic harvest there's a little closer look at it now considering it's got bill mosley from the rob zombie films and it's got lynn shea from the insidious films and and other kind of jason blum works you'd think this movie would be really really good it is not i think we found this at our local dollar rama shop around halloween time last year or so and it is it is a really really bad sea level horror movie basically some college kids are trying to have fun during mardi gras and bill mosley's character is hitting on one of the young girls probably 18 or older but it, it's still creepy it still just leaves you feeling yucky in your stomach watching this probably 60 year old man hit on this this you know teenage young adult it, it just it's not good they're they're sort of playing the good guy they're just they're protecting them from some other assholes in the bar at first i believe if i remember correctly it's been a while since i've seen this and trust me i only watched it once yeah so it kind of goes along there and then eventually one of them gets captured 
and dragged off to this country home that kind of has a Texas Chainsaw Massacre state house look to it. And then Lynn Shea's there and they're trying to do some sort of voodoo ritual on these girls and people that they have captured there. I don't remember the reason why they're doing it. I feel like they're trying to induct people into their family and continue on the legacy because, you know, inbreeding's bad and uh, you can't uh, keep that bloodline too strong. <laughs> so I think that's why they're trying to capture these people and induct them into their family and, and breed them without their consent. Yeah, it's, it's really fucked. And it just doesn't go so well for a couple of the teenagers that try and come in and help. I think I'm already making this movie sound better than what it really is. The acting is terrible. Lynn Shea just... She does the Lynn Shea thing, but she puts in just zero effort <laughs> into this. I, I feel like Bill Mosley and Lynn Shea just did it for a, you know, a, a nice quick paycheck and, and just put the bare minimum into it. Uh, I just... I think we picked it up for $4 maybe or so. It's not even worth that. Unfortunately... The, the tease of Bill Mosley and Lynn Shea being in a film called Gothic Harvest. It sounds like, you know, at least a decent horror movie considering. But no, no, don't waste your time. I'm going to give it a, a 3 out of 10. Don't, don't even pick it up in the bargain bin, sadly enough. Next one is another Stephen King film. I'm talking about Firestarter. This is the remake with Zac Efron in it. He, I am, let's just say, not a big fan of Zac Efron. I don't like anything that he's been in. Baywatch was ridiculous. I like The Rock. He's, you know, he's cool and all. But yeah, Zac Efron is just terrible. Terrible actor. Really cheesy. I didn't like him in, what was it, The Neighbors with Seth Rogen either. Terrible. But in this, he actually plays a half decent father character to the little girl that has pyrokinesis so kudos to him for playing a serious role and doing a, a pretty good job at it to be honest his reactions to his daughter doing stuff with her powers that kind of would be questionable is is you know pretty reasonable i believe that he as a father that has things going on that he has going on no spoilers that he would react the way he does in this movie and the little girl that's in this you know child acting is you know normally pretty miss with some hits she does an all right job she's at the beginning of her acting career so it's not expected that she's gonna be blowing it out of the park with how amazing her acting is so i i believe the the two main stars are golden for what they're given and maybe could see some improvement in Zac Efron's acting in the future if he's given enough serious roles and not just this weird quirky goofy ass comedy stuff that he does and of course the little girl if she's going to continue on acting she's probably going to do a really good job as she grows up so we might see her in more future horror movies or maybe legit like blockbusters in the future but we'll see my thoughts on this movie as a whole was that it was probably five times more entertaining than the original firestarter of course the old classic horror movies tend to have that thing where it's like mostly plot mostly character building until the last 15 minutes of it where they ramp up and actually decide to do some interesting things besides a kill here and there throughout up until that point so you would hope that a modern remake would be better and a little bit more exciting so that doesn't say much that this is more exciting than the first one however it is pretty good and there's a if you get the dvd or if you watch the youtube part with the extras there is an alternate ending and some extra scenes here and there i'm not sure whether i like the ending of this legit part of the film or if i like the alternate ending more they both have interesting things one makes her more of a redeemable character the other makes her more of a more of a sinister killer and kind of leaves a question mark up in the air of whether she's going to be a problem and creates a part two i think both create a part two but yeah i like the alternate ending as well i can't really decide which one i like better they might do a part two i don't remember what the box office was for this or what the budget was in comparison so maybe they didn't make the return i don't remember hearing too much great things about firestarter critic wise but 
I enjoyed it enough. We wanted to pick it up because the wife and I are fans of Stephen King films and books and series and stuff like that. I eventually want to get all of the Stephen King films on DVD. I think that's a priority for the wife too when it comes to horror collecting. It just it takes a while because there's a lot of adaptations that Stephen King has had. But again, if you like Stephen King films, if you enjoyed the original Firestarters at all, give this one a shot. It's not the best, most exciting Stephen King movie, but some of it's pretty interesting. I like the backstory with the parents in this one. I don't remember there being too much of a backstory with the parents in the original. So, hmm. And I'll be damned if I remember what the original Firestarter Part 2 was about. So, yeah. It was good. I gave it a 6 out of 10. I probably won't watch it again anytime soon. But that being said, maybe I should, because we did only watch it the once, I believe. So, yeah, it was good. It, it wasn't amazing. It wasn't shit. Disregard what the critics are saying if it's super negative and go check it out yourself. All right, moving right along. This one, I mean, it's Blumhouse. So whenever that name is attached to any movie, I'm more than likely going to give it a shot and more than likely going to find it favorable because I enjoy Blumhouse. In Blumhouse, we trust in this house. So we gave it a shot and wow, it was way better than we were expecting. The commercials and, and, and trailers and stuff made it seem like, okay, yeah, it could be creepy. It could be an all right movie. But then it kind of blew up and became a really big thing. Blumhouse's Black Phone was pretty well received from what I can recall. And the wife and I really, really enjoyed it. We got the collector's edition with a bunch of deleted scenes and interviews. And it even has the short film by Scott Derrickson called The Shadow Prowler, which has kind of got an interesting twist to it. You think one thing's going on and that at the end of the short film... Something else is actually occurring, and then the main character is like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty cool. I'm uh, glad we got that little extra on there. And again, the black phone has kind of been a huge thing TikTok wise. The wife watches a lot of TikTok. I'm not really on there. I upload stuff on my own TikTok account. It's mostly just skits or my thoughts on certain energy drinks and shit. So nothing really important. But on TikTok, this thing is blown up. A lot of people really enjoyed it. A lot of people cut scenes from it and add opinions and, and voiceovers or some sort of like funniness to it. There's been a lot of thirsting after Ethan Hawke where he's topless in the chair with the mask on with the belt. A lot of weird <laughs> kink implications going on there. But besides that, it's a really good movie. And apparently there's going to be a sequel or a prequel coming soon from Blumhouse because it made quite an amount of money from this on, I'm assuming, a pretty reasonable budget. We enjoyed it. Pretty interested to see what happens with the sequel or prequel. Go check out The Black Phone. You probably have already if you're into horror. 8.5 out of 10 good movie. All right, moving on to one that, again, it's a, a Blumhouse film, so I had to check it out. I had to give it the benefit of the doubt and see what I thought of it, and I'm talking about Dash Cam. This one also, I think, made the rounds on TikTok and whatever. I know Sarah Hawkinson from Possessed by Horror did a a review on it. I don't think she shit on it. I think she has actually made like some pretty complimenting remarks about it, minus one or two things. I can't remember what her overall thoughts on it was, whether it was super negative or super positive. I'm pretty sure she was pretty positive about this. I can't remember. Again, it was one of those things where it's like a, a low budget, even if they fucked it up, it still probably made its money back. It's basically this really, really annoying woman who's doing a live TikTok podcast, I think, a streamer. And she's, I think, also maybe an Uber driver, and that's why she's driving around. And she does skits and, and some sort of improv rapping thing while she drives place to place and then one of the people she ends up picking up is from this really sketchy area and things just start progressively getting weirder and weirder and the plot turns supernatural let's say and it's from the same creators of the movie host i think host was way better than this to be honest you're, you're either gonna love this or hate this based on the main character i cannot stand the main character in this 
So it made it really, really hard to watch. Her rapping was cringy. Her character was super cringy. Her personality was just absolutely awful. You, I really don't feel like you were supposed to empathize with her or, or feel sympathy for her at all. It's hard to feel scared that anything's going to happen to her, in my opinion, because I don't like her and I think it's funny when the bad shit starts happening to her. Because you're like, God damn it, girl, you're just bringing it on yourself. <laughs> So, yeah. It's hard to rate this because everything else that happens is kind of neat, kind of creepy. And if it had a more serious, more enjoyable, pleasant main character, this would actually be more concerning and more creepy and more edge of your seat because you would care that something is going to happen to this character. And, and that's who I'm talking about. Her. She just, anything that you could have cared about that was going to happen to her, her personality and character just ruins it. And you, I just, I don't feel like people are going to care that bad things are happening to her in this movie because she's a fucking idiot. On one hand, I want to give this an 8 out of 10 because of the plot and the creepy things that happen and the kind of supernatural stuff that starts going on and you're like, holy fuck. But at the same time, it's like, I, I wish to never ever see this main character again or hear her voice or her shit jokes or her terrible rapping that she does all throughout the film. Oh, this had the potential to be really good. If it's based just on her character, I'm giving it a 3.5 out of 10. But if I'm basing it on everything else that happens that doesn't involve her, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. So I guess we can just kind of average it out and give it a 5.5 out of 10. I think you need to see this. But I also think go in very cautiously knowing that the main character is probably going to be annoying as fuck. So yeah, cool supernatural stuff, really creepy shit that happens in it. Interesting point of view because it all happens from her phone or, or, or some cameras and stuff. But my God, she's annoying. So if you go into this watching it and you're like, she's a, a dumb bitch. I told you so. But also, the other stuff's neat. So it, it's hard. It's, you know, I wish they didn't have that character. I think they thought that that was going to be funnier or more intriguing than what it was to have that type of personality guiding the movie. But it, it, it really, it really detracts from what could have been awesome. Moving on to the last film of this horror films to watch or avoid. This is definitely a watch because, god damn, I love the first movie. I don't give a shit that they didn't age her properly or, or they waited way too fucking long orphan first kill this is an awesome movie there's a lot of twisty creepy crazy shit that happens in this and the first one spoiler alert skip ahead 20 seconds but she's a full grown ass woman and that's the twist at the end so at the beginning of the movie you think it's all this little girl is doing creepy crazy shit no nope, it's not all right now that we're back from the spoiler alert, this one cuts right into it and leans into it and you know right away what the twist of the first movie is. So you're like, well, how could they possibly do a twist in this one? Well, let's just say the little girl being a murderous psychopath and twisted isn't the only person that's murderous and psychopathic and twisted in this. And you don't really learn that until halfway through the film, so it's, it's kind of interesting. I, I definitely liked that twist because you, you figure since this movie spoils the twist of the first film within the first probably 15 minutes of this film, you're like, oh, well, I guess there's no twist. Oh, there is, and it's a really good one, and it's a, you don't really see it coming. At least I didn't. I'm a moron, I guess, if, if you've seen this coming right away and you've seen this film. But I didn't see that coming. And I'm like, oh, shit. And, and the fact that Julia Stiles is in this, pretty cool. I enjoyed her. And, and some of her, like, pretentious, kind of artsy-fartsy, dramatic films. Most people know Julia Stiles from 10 Things I Hate About You with Heath Ledger. At least that's where I figure most people know her from. So she plays an interesting mom in this. The, the dad, he gets fucked over the most in it. I feel like he's a really underappreciated character that just you feel so bad for him considering everything that's going on and he doesn't even know at least i don't think he does the twist of this film so it's like well damn dude you got fucked over and you seem like a genuinely nice dude so ah oh, that's balls for him good movie 
cool twist, lots of creepy stuff, some interesting kills, a lot of like on your seat, what's going to happen next parts for sure. The intrigue of Isabella's character in here is still there for sure. It is still totally worth the watch, still totally worth picking up on DVD in my opinion. I wish I had seen this in theaters, really, really good. And I, I again, I don't even care that they didn't really put too much effort into de-aging Isabella Furman in this. You get over it within the first quarter of the film. You're like, okay, yeah, she, she doesn't look as she did in the first movie, even though this is supposed to happen before the first movie. I didn't give a shit after the first 15 minutes. I'm like, yeah, I believe it. She's still a little kid in, in this one to me. Just because you're young doesn't mean you don't look a little older. So I think we can get over that part with the Isabella Furman character in this. I'll be damned if I don't mention, I hope there is a third film in this series and I, oh, I just, I wish so badly that they retconned the ending of the first film so there could be a sequel to it. If you've seen the first film, you know what I mean. It's kind of left where you can't really do a proper sequel to it. So I, I hope that they figure out a way to retcon what happened at the end. Or at least kind of explain around it how it could continue on. Because I don't think there's room for a movie between First Kill and the first Orphan movie. I don't think there's like a enough room for a movie in between those. Could be wrong, but yeah. And of course, Isabella Furman's not getting any younger. So, I don't know. But I do want to see another one of these. Even if you have to find an actress that sort of looks like Isabella Foreman from the first one and just cast her as the character in this. That's what I would probably do. Either I would retcon the ending of the first film so there could be a sequel, or I would just recast Isabella Furman's character with someone who looks pretty close to how she looked in the first film to make another one. Because again, she's not getting any younger, but amazing film, excellent horror movie, enjoyed the hell out of it. Go, go buy a copy. All right, so yeah, this is our stack of horror movies to watch or avoid in this episode. Let me know which ones you've seen. Let me know which ones you plan on seeing. Give me your opinions on any of these in the comment section below. Would love to hear your thoughts on them. Did your ranking meet mine? Did you think some were worse than what I thought or better than I thought? Would be cool to know either way. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I don't do that often. Probably more than 50% of you who are watching aren't subscribed. So if you made it this far in the video and you liked this content, I do it fairly often. So please consider liking and subscribing, of course. And if you really feel like being generous, maybe share it on your Instagram or Facebook or somewhere so you can help out some small metal slash horror channels here. It would be greatly appreciated. So thank you. Cheers for glory, for the rebellion, Slammerella out.